He is Frank Isola of the New York Daily News. How are you, Frank? Rich, how are you? How'd you do in the uh, combine this year? A, f- a, f- a five nine four, Frank. Not bad. I didn't see. I got to watch that. Too. No, no, please. It, it's okay. I mean, I'm available for the Giants and Jets to draft me. Although uh, I would, I would, <laughs> I would advise them to to look elsewhere. They need they need someone who can get to the quarterback, not really somebody that could run down the field. Well, so I mean, I could turn the edge if that's what's needed. <laughs> there you go. You know, I could do that. Uh, you've been there, done that, seen this, seen that. Have you ever seen anything like what happened last night in Madison Square Garden, Frank? There always seems to be some kind of crazy drama. I mean, Rich, I still remember the day when uh, Latrell Sprewell was about to inbound the uh, basketball and Calvin Klein, the, the uh, blue jeans Calvin Klein, got up to kind of shake his hand and hug him, which was kind of weird. I think Calvin Klein at the time was a little inebriated. So I've seen crazy things, but Carmelo is clearly frustrated. If you go back to Sunday's game, Against Miami, it was Amari Stoudemire's first game back in New York since um, getting released last year. And a lot of old topics were brought up, including Jeremy Lin. And you know, Amari seemed to be taking some su- uh, subtle shots at Carmelo. So I think Carmelo is just a little tired of being the one that's getting blamed constantly. So he was sitting at the end of the bench with about 4.14, I think it was, to go in the game. And this fan is heckling him. And then he got up and started having going back and forth, and he was sitting five feet from Jim Dolan. He basically said, "Here's the owner. If you want to, if you want your money back, uh, address it with him." So is that a fair is that a fair sort of turn style to say, hey, "Don't don't talk to me. I'm the star of this team. I'm I'm the guy who is either the savior or not." Talk to the owner over there. Well, I, well, I think that's the thing that a lot of players struggle with in New York, and Carmelo obviously has to take some kind of uh, accountability. And you know this when Patrick Ewing was in New York. You know, Patrick probably never got enough credit but always got most of the blame. And I think, you know, when you're Stephon Marbury in New York and now Carmelo Anthony, that sometimes is tough to handle. I actually think Carmelo's done a pretty good job with it. And I think there's a lot of frustrating things. I'm sure you've seen the highlight of him, you know, trying to dunk the ball after the whistle was blown. It was uncontested, and he kind of stuffed himself at the rim. And that's in the first quarter. So he's a year removed from surgery. So physically, he's not all the way there. The fact that the team is going to miss the playoffs for the third straight year. And his buddies go back to that banana boat that they were riding in the Bahamas. LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul. What do they all have in common? They'll both be in the playoffs. Two of those guys are playing for a championship contender. I think, you know, for Carmelo, he's 31. He's seeing kind of, you know, the end of his playing days at a high level coming to an end sooner than later. And he wishes things would turn around quickly. But I also think with him and Jim Dolan, Rich, he actually has a pretty good relationship with them. So I almost like think it's almost like a cry for help in some ways. I, I, something's going to happen here with the Knicks sooner than later, I think. Especially once you, you know, once the game ended, Jim Dolan made a beeline right for the uh, suite that Phil Jackson goes into after the game. So something, something's going to happen, I think. Yeah, Frank Isola, the Daily News, joining me here. And that's the thing I was going to ask you, because that's in, that's in graph four of your uh, gamer in the Daily News today, um, or three, graph three, pardon me, that uh, Dolan headed directly for Jackson's suite immediately after the Portland victory. What, 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 what are you, your best guesstimate is said in there? What, what is said in there? I think he's got to be really upset because, you know, they were 22 and 22 at one point. They're completely falling apart. They're not even being competitive now in a lot of these games. And it's funny, too, the way it works now at Madison Square Garden, and you obviously are very familiar with the old Madison Square Garden and the famous tunnel that Willis Reed yeah. ran out from before, you know, in that game seven. And it was very easy to kind of get around. And a lot of times when Tim Dolan would go in the back to talk to maybe the head coach or the GM, you'd be able to see him. And the way they made the new garden, it's like a maze, and it's, like, it's really difficult to kind of get around. The security guards all over the place where half of them are done. You can't go this way, you can't go that way. So you don't always see Jim Dillon leaving. There have been a couple of times where we've seen him this year. He's clearly looked uh, upset. He's spending a lot of money for a product that isn't good. And I've heard that he's gotten into it with uh, Phil Jackson a couple of times just within the past month. So I can't imagine he was in a much better mood last night, especially now that he's kind of been thrown into this story by Carmelo. That's why I was saying it's like a classic kind of passive-aggressive move by Carmelo. It's almost like as if he's saying, all right, Jim, come on, let's do something here. You know, we we gotta we gotta figure out a solution because this isn't working. I'm tired of being the guy that's being blamed. I can't imagine it was a pleasant sit down between Phil and Jim Dolan. Who, by the way, Phil's guest at the game last night 
with John Lithgow. Yeah, I don't know how that would factor into it, but he was there. Yeah, we we we, we saw uh, that uh, that video as well. Maybe he was asking him about uh, the days of World According to Garp, uh, Third Rock from the <laughs> or, Sun. Or how about how about Twilight Zone? Could be could have been that, that in that movie. Uh, I mean, because so so what's the answer, Frank? Because obviously Rambus isn't the answer at coach. We all know how rocky. His tenure is, and I'm not talking about wins and losses. Um, uh, I, what is the answer here? Well, I, I, I think, you know, and you mentioned it before about, you know, Phil Jackson. And, you know, Phil Jackson won 11 championships as a coach. He's never built a team before. So over the last two seasons, his teams are 42 and 102. And you hear all the time about, you know, what kind of coach he's going to hire. Forget all that. Forget the triangle system. Just hire the best guy that's out there. You got Tom Thibodeau, who coached here in New York under Jeff Van Gundy. He had very good success in Chicago. Go check out Chicago's record this year, what it is. And right now they sit in ninth place after giving up 67% shooting last night to Miami. So you have a top coach out there. There's no salary cap for coaches, so it doesn't matter what you give them. Not that you're going to have to break the bank, but you can get Tom Thibodeau. I think Phil is too stuck on this triangle offense. And, Rich, when you talk to NBA people, they just think the offense, it's, it's too many two-point jump shots that you take. You don't get fouled enough. The way the game is played now, it's either at the rim or three-point shots. Watch the Knicks play. They're one of the most unathletic teams in the NBA. It's like they'd be good maybe if this, was with, if this were the 90s. It's not the 90s anymore. It's a different kind of game, and Phil's so stuck on this triangle thing. And let's face it, offense is actually the least of their problems. They don't stop anybody. So they, they have a lot of problems right now, and I think Phil just needs to bite the bullet here. If he's going to be the guy, just go out and hire the best coach. Frank, Enough with, like, it has to be your system, the triangle. Enough with that. Well, Frank Isola of the Daily News joining me here. But, you know, a coach is just one thing, and system is another thing. You know it's a star-driven league here, and you don't need more than one. And the one thing about Carmelo that maybe people are even giving him grief today for passing the buck to James Dolan from the fan right there is he at least wants to be in New York. He's actually raised his hand, signed a deal, and made a, a no-trade a no clause. Who else wants to come? I mean, what's the play here? Durant? You're hoping Durant leaves Oklahoma City? You're hoping Russell Westbrook does it? What's that, what's that long-term play to actually get players in? Yeah, I, I, know. I think that's a fair point you bring up, but it's also fair in, in Carmelo's defense. You know, people killed LeBron for leaving. Here now people are going to kill Carmelo. Well, why are you staying in New York chase the championship? Somewhere else. He wants to be here. He likes being here. But you're right. They need to do something, you know, pretty bold. Now, the issue is, if you're Kevin Durant, you're looking to win a championship, are you leaving the team you're on to go to a worse situation? <laughs> that doesn't seem to make much sense. I could see him going to Golden State. He'd be going to a better situation or staying in Oklahoma City. But, you know, Mike Connolly is going to be a free agent after the season. You'd hope that Przingis could continue to develop and maybe get another guy. You hire the right coach. And now all of a sudden, let's face it, you, you, if you're competing for 50 wins, and it wasn't that long ago, Rich, where they won 54 games, they finished second in the East, they beat Miami twice during the regular season, that was the LeBron-Miami team, and they had a good group of veteran players led by Jason Kidd who really ran that locker room. Carmelo finished third in the MVP. So it's not like Carmelo hasn't had some success, and not the success that people would have wanted in these three straight seasons without the playoffs. is clearly a bad look for him. But when put around the right group of teammates with the right coach, it could still work. And I still think you could turn things around relatively quickly. I know, I, I, I mean, you look at the Lakers, you look at the Knicks, and it looks kind of hopeless. But if you make the right couple of moves, you get a little lucky, all of a sudden your fortunes change rather quickly. Well, and this is the last one for you, Frank. It's interesting you mentioned both of those franchises because they're similar in the fact that they think, well, you know, the history of our franchises. Oh, the Lakers with their championships, the Knicks with the world's most famous arena. Of course, players are going to want to come here. Uh, that alone is a great sell. And, and year after year after year, we're not seeing that. Nobody's coming. And in the regards with the Lakers, Wojo of Yahoo wrote that article, I'm sure you saw, a few weeks ago saying, there's talk that Phil might go back to Los Angeles, tell Luke Walton, you come join me there. He's with, he's with uh, you know, he's with his, his lady. I mean, the, he, he, he's with yep. Jeannie Buss. They're right now they're long distance. So is that a possibility? Are people talking about that in New York as being feasible, Frank? Yeah, that, that, that's definitely been talked about. And you know this as being a New Yorker, and this probably pains, uh, will pain you to hear this, but you know, I still think in terms of being a preferred destination, I would still put the Lakers ahead of New York because they do have more of a history, a championship history, 
and obviously the weather in L.A. I think the issue that it's funny about both those teams that they have, because it's different now with the league. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook play in Oklahoma City. They're in every other commercial, so it doesn't matter where you play. Right. And I think there's a, there's a guy that's connected to both the Lakers and the Knicks, and that being Pat Riley, who's in the best situation. I think that is the number one free agent destination because you've got everything. The winning tradition, the unbelievable weather, it's a very relaxed kind of deal down there. College football and pro football are bigger than the heat, so it's not like you got to put up with all the nonsense like you do with the Lakers and you do in New York. Look at Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson could have chased the championship right now with Cleveland. He went to Miami. Now, granted, he'll play more, but I don't really think Miami's going to win a championship, but it just tells you never rule out Pat Riley when it comes to free agents. So while the Knicks are going to go after Durant, the Lakers will, and I've said this before, Rich, never underestimate Pat Riley. I hear you. I, I'm 100% on that, on that train, Frank. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. We'll have you back soon, Thanks, hopefully. And anytime. Take you care. Thank you. That's Frank Isola. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>